welcome once again in the class of design of steel structure so we are learning the design of gantry girder so far we have seen what is the gantry girder what are the forces coming under gantry girder what are the profiles of the gantry girder and what is the design procedure of the gantry girder and what are the specification of the gantry girder so in this lecture we are going to see the problem on the gantry girder or the numericals on the gantry girder so remember one thing while solving for the exam uh, what you will have one either you will uh, ask to calculate the forces that is either bending moment or the shear force uh, bending moment and the shear force or either bending moment and shear force has been given and you have to uh, you will be asked to design uh, the particular gantry girder so either design will be there or analysis will be there the loads has been given and then the forces you have to calculate or the forces will be given and you have to design the gantry girder so these kind of things may be given in the uh, exam so this is the examination pattern so today uh, uh, we will going to see uh, the entire procedure of the solving uh, the the design and the analysis part of this gantry girder so basically this is one of the biggest problem so it will rather take more lectures than one so we'll see uh, how to design the gantry girder so i am mr s s ogle assistant professor civil engineering department this is the problem statement design a gantry girder to be used in an industrial building carrying an electric overhead traveling crane for the following data the crane capacity 200 kN self head of the crane girder excluding the trolley that is 200 kN self head of the trolley electric motor and the hook that is 40 kN the maximum appro uh, approximate minimum approach of the crane hook to the gantry girder is 1.2 meter the wheel base is 3.5 meter center to center distance between gantry rails it is 16 meters the center to center distance between column that is span of the gantry that is 8 meter self weight of the rail 300 newton per mm square and the fy of the steel has been given that is 250 mp now the maximum wheel load so the maximum load on the crane that is 200 plus 40 that is 240 kN so the crane load that has been given over here that is this self weight of the crane and uh, one sec and this self weight of the trolley so the maximum concentrated load on the crane is 200 plus 40 so this is basically the this thing and this thing. that is crane capacity and this load of trolley that is 240 so crane will carry the self weight as a udl so here we are distributing this 200 kN on the entire span that is span of this uh, distance between this gantry rail that is 16 meter so you will you will have 200 divided by 60 equals to 12.5 kN per meter so for maximum reaction of the gantry girder the loads are placed on the gantry girder so here we are placing the loads that is this minimum approach we have that is 1.2 meter so here one gantry is there that is one rail and here another rail is there and below that the gantry girder has been placed and this is the nothing but the trolley or the crab this is the crab this is nothing but the crab so crab is coming at a minimum approach of 1.2 from the gantry girder so we are placing this load this is the udl that is weight of the crane girder so by taking moment at b what we will get that is ra into 16 that is this span uh, we are taking moment over here is equals to 12.5 into 16 square divided by 2 plus 240 into 16 minus 1.2 that is this distance so ra becomes 322 kN and rv becomes 180 kN by so all solving the reaction so we are getting reactions at a and b 
so reaction from the crane girder is distributed equally on the two wheels because we are having the two wheels at the end of crane girder now <clears throat> the maximum wheel load on each wheel that is 322 divided by 2 because this is the maximum load that is 322 So that is one six one kilo newton. So now we are calculating the maximum bending moment. So we know the condition. So we have this wheel base of three point five. That is distance between two wheels of the crane. That is this three point five meter. So the distance between these two wheels are three point five. So we know that it is at the distance of this b by 4 b by either on this side or this side where you want to keep no issue so we are keeping at this position so this 3.5 divided by 4 that is 0.875 and this is the 4 meter distance Center of this particular gantry, that is half of the eight meter, that is four meters. This four meter distance, we are keeping one wheel, that is at B by four, that is point eight seventy five meter. So as here you can see, uh, this is the condition. Only thing is we are uh, now keeping the uh, crane on this side. that is only the difference here <clears throat> so now the position of one wheel from midpoint of the span that is wheel base by 4 that is 3.5 by 4 that is 0.875 so we are now taking movement at d at this point we are taking it. so we have to calculate the rc and rd so rc into it that is this distance 161 that is one wheel into 8 minus 1.375 that is this distance plus 161 into 3.125 that is again the next distance that is this from d this distance this is 3.125 because after deducting This four minus three say eight seventy five will get this value. So we are taking moment at D. That's why the distance is there. So what we will get? R C is equals to one ninety six point twenty two, and R D is one twenty five point seventy eight. Now bending moment due to live load. That is this one twenty five into three point one two five. That is. We are taking section over here. This one twenty five into this three point one two five. So we'll get the maximum bending moment at this point here. So that is three ninety three point zero six. And bending moment due to impact because uh, we have the electrical motor or electric operated trolley. so as we have seen over here we have increased the vertical forces by 25% so we are increasing it by 25% so by increasing adding this thing so the total moment due to live load and impact load that is 393.06 plus 98.26 will get the 491.32 kN meter now assume the self weight of the gantry girder this 2 kN per meter now the dead load assume self weight of the gantry that is 2 kN per meter <coughs> so the total dead load that is 2000 N plus 300 N that is obviously weight of the rail so 2.3 kN per meter so bending moment due to total load that is w square by it that is 2.3 into 8 raised to it so that becomes 18.4 kilonewton meter
now the maximum bending moment so at this point they are calculating the maximum bending moment so 491 due to dead load and 18.2 due to live load so sorry 491 due to live load and 18.2 due to self weight of the gantry and rail so we'll get the 509.72 kilonewton per meter kilonewton meter not bit per meter and that becomes 509.72 in newton mm so now maximum shear force so for maximum shear force we have to put one wheel on the one support so here we are putting this thing now again we are taking moment at the d so again rc into 8 equals to 161 into this 8 and this 161 into 4.5 that is this distance so the rc becomes 251.56 and then the maximum shear force will be again 251.56 into 10 to 3 newton now the cross section of the girder so we are using the equation of bending or flexure equation that is z equals to m upon sigma b c or d <coughs> So M is 509.72 in the standard C and sigma BC there 0.66 that is 165. So that becomes 3089.21 into 10 to 3 mm cube. Now the Z required that we are increasing by 25%. As we have told, we have to increase by 20 to 40%. We are increasing by 25%. So by increasing this thing, we will get the value that is 3861.51 into 10 to 3 mm cube that is this so we are choosing the section by combining two sections so we are choosing this iswb 600 and ismc 300 so we are choosing this section iswb 600 is rather one of the most uh, that is biggest section in the, that category so we'll see as wb600 hmm. this is the IWB 600 and we are choosing the second thing is ISMC 300 so ISMC 300 we are choosing This ISMC 300. This one. So we are placing those two sections like this. This is ISMC 300 and this is iswb 600 so uh, we are placing it like this and the other calculation we have to do so first we will write the properties over here that is for i section and for channel section that is c section so area is 117,038 mm square and this is 4,564 mm square t that is thickness of the uh, flange that is 21.3 and this is 30.6 thickness of the web 11.2 and 7.6 the width is 250 width is 90 mm ixx that is having this value uh, that 1,000 uh, uh, 1 lakh 6,000 and 198.5 uh, 4 
and this is 6362.6 into 10 raised to 4. Remember, we are keeping this section like this. These are the properties when section is like this, but we have to keep the section like this. So uh, this may these things may flip in this case. So we will discuss the things on that uh, particular point. Then I X I Y Y is 4702.5 into 10 to 4 and this is 310.8 into 10 to 4 and CYY is 23.6 that is this CYY CG in this direction CYY now the moment of inertia of gantry cutter the distance of neutral axis of the built up section from the extreme fiber of compression edge so we are calculating here so Y bar equals to summation of a into y divided by a so we are taking the distances from the compression fiber that is from here so look closely <clears throat> so this is the area of this i section that is this area of i section into 300 that is this depth is 600 so half of that is 300 plus this one that is 7.6 that is the thickness of the web plus this area of the channel that is 4564 into 23.6 that is CYY divided by the area so we will get the Y bar from the top that is compression fiber 247.59 so here this is 247.59 this is written over here 247.59 <clears throat> now the gross moment of energy of the section so i x gross has been calculated over here so this is the moment of energy that is that has been given already that is i x x plus a y that is area into this y that is 307.6 minus 247 that is cg lies over here so distance between two cgs that is 360 minus this distance this distance we will get this distance This 360 minus this will get this distance so this is particularly cg of the entire section and this is cg of i section so that way you have to calculate then again this is for the channel section that 310.8 so here you can see we are considering i y y because we have flipped the section from vertical to uh, from this axis has been flipped we have a properties when section is like this but we have done section like this so that's why we have the properties have been so 310.8 into 10 to 4 into area into this 247 Is 247 that is this distance minus this distance that is 23.6 so we'll get this distance so 247.59 minus 23.6 square so what you will get you will get this ix6 cross 135 543 into 10 to 4 mm plus to 4 same way the IY has been calculated here the no issue of this uh, uh, AY because the CG of both has been coincide so obviously this Y bar equals to 0 and no issue of this uh, AY so directly we are adding this IYY of the I section and IXX of the channel 
so by adding this we will get this value that is 11,065 to n raise to 4 mm raise to 4 so this step is more important even though we have gone already through all these things but these things are more important over here how to calculate this basic value that is ixx and iyy in this particular section what we are doing and how we have flipped the section which value we have to take over where how we have to calculate this y bars these y bars that is more important in this case so all you have to keep in mind while calculating all these things so today we will stop here and we will continue the problem in next lecture so these are the references for today's lecture thank you